Hi gang, this is Mr. Incognito and you're watching Judo Comics TV. <laughs> I'm here today with Dave Good and Vance Capley, the co-creators of Judo Comics. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. You guys are the best known for the... Wow. You guys are best known for the creators of Dr. Judo, Mr. Incognito, and the Golden Adonis. But another popular creation of yours is the Phantom Gorilla. How did you come about creating the Phantom Gorilla? I mean, why a Phantom Gorilla? Why not? <laughs> exactly. Why not a phantom gorilla? But uh, I'm a Silver Age kid, so I grew up with Gorilla Grodd and Mansoor Mala at DC and uh, the Red Ghost and his Super Apes over at Marvel. Oh, Fantastic Four. And Gorilla Grodd was on Super Friends when I was a kid back in the There 70s. you go. Yeah. So uh, we got into those uh, comics with intelligent gorillas in that, but we also love old B movies from the 40s and 50s. And the thing to go, if you did not have a budget for special effects for your monster, the thing to do would be to hire an ape suit guy because that was the cheapest uh, monster you could get. Um, you got robot monster, yeah. the legendary iconic bad B movie. Gorilla suit? Fishbowl head. Right. They Perfect. They originally wanted to do a uh, use a robot, but they didn't have the budget for it, so they got a, a gorilla suit actor, and they got his gorilla suit, and they put a diving helmet on his head, and voila! <laughs> there were so many Three Stooges shorts as well with gorilla suits. There's horror films with gorilla suits. There's jungle films with gorilla suits. Um, just tons of them. But more importantly, I'd say uh, the inspiration partially for the Phantom Gorilla was a movie called The Monster and the Girl. And in that one, this girl is forced into a life of prostitution and her brother is seeking revenge on the guys that forced her into this life. Uh, he ends up getting framed for murder. He uh, donates his brain to this mad scientist played by George Zuko and they put his brain in the gorilla's body and this way he runs around getting his revenge on the people that had framed him and forced his uh, sister into a life of vice. And you think about that, that's pretty much a comic book superhero's origin in a horror film. So part of the idea and keeping with our judo comics motif was in our comic book the uh, Phantom Gorilla, he was a guy who was training for the National Collegiate Judo Championships and a mad scientist got a hold of him, put his brain in a uh, gorilla's body. So now not only does he have the strength of a gorilla, which is more or less the strength of ten men, or as he says in the comic book, I'm as strong as just about any actual comic book hero but he also has the judo skills to go along with it. So, yeah, when you first sent me the script to Phantom Gorilla, I was just like, how is this going to work? And you said, relax, think about it like those great old B movies. I was like, cool. And you said, I want the villain to be Phil Philip Van Zandt. And the only thing <laughs> I could think of was the Three Stooges short with the gorilla suit episode where Philip Van Zandt's wearing these big, thick glasses. Right. And I actually drew that in here. <laughs> And, and it's going to flash across the screen, but it's just putting that in there. And then for some wicked reason, there's certain young men from a town called Riverdale as his assistants. <laughs> Don't know why, but it's fun. It was fun when I read this and started drawing. I had even more fun. And going back to the, uh, the judo idea, you look at a gorilla, and a gorilla is actually built like he could be a sumo wrestler, and it, it's a perfect... Uh, physique for uh, a judo player. <coughs> Excuse me. You were talking about ape suit movies of the 1940s and 50s. How do you think they compare to the CGI effects of today? Well, uh, I'm going to say the CGI effects give you a more realistic gorilla. I mean, they actually look like apes and they move like apes, but you know what? That really sucks. 
I go, give me a gorilla suit, give me a cheesy gorilla suit any any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Those are cool. You got and you you got actual the guys were you know. Give me Ray Corrigan in a gorilla suit. Yes. Give me you know, Emo Van Horn. Give me Steve Calvert. Come on, that's great stuff. I, it isn't necessary for me to see what looks like a real gorilla. It's not as much fun, darn it. You go to the zoo to see a, a real gorilla, and seriously, the fun is not there with the modern CGI. Exactly, exactly. There, you know, you, you want to see someone in a gorilla suit who cannot, there's no way that's a real gorilla. It doesn't matter. You're there to have fun. I mean, to be to be fair, once again, uh, they've had Gorilla Grodd, the most famous of the Silver Age comic book gorillas on the Flash TV show. Yes, the CGI looks fantastic, but I can't help imagining a 1960s <laughs> yeah. Flash movie with Tab Hunter, yep, as Tab Flash. Hunter as Barry Allen Flash with yep. the blonde crew cut, yep. and and somebody in a cheesy gorilla suit. Yep, that's what it has to be. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you guys here. <laughs> <laughs> Acting like total morons, but that's cool too. <laughs> and we were glad to be here. So right. thank Definitely. you, thank Thanks. you for having us. I right. hope to have you guys soon. Okay. Hope to have us guys soon. <laughs> I said you guys soon. No, you just that's say I hope to have you now. We just <laughs> say I hope to have you back soon. It's all right. Wait. <laughs> it's all right. Nobody's going to pay yeah, attention. True, They're going to look at the two morons <laughs> acting like. <laughs>